Well, I have good news for you today. The good news today comes from the Bible story of Jethro. Most of you don't know a lot about Jethro. If you know anything at all, it was probably only that he was Moses' father-in-law. But today, we're going to learn a little bit more about Jethro. I think you'll see there's some amazing good news here. In this series on relationships, we've been talking about how important it is uh, to have a support group that, that we're all connected to each other. You know, someone has said there's like six degrees of separation, and we find that that is so true. We all are connected in one way or another, and we are just are thankful for that. It's actually a blessing that, that we have this type of connection. Jethro was a great advisor, and we all need advisors, don't we? When you go off to college, you are immediately given an, an advisor to help you with your course of study, and that advisor teaches you uh, what classes you need to take and where you need to live and all, all those kinds of things, and we're thankful for our advisors. Well, we have advisors, all of us, uh, around us. Sometimes the advice that we get is good advice. Sometimes it's not so good advice. Uh, sometimes we wish people didn't give us the advice. But there are those who are willing to give us advice. And it's good for us to have Jethro's to advise us. And then we can take into consideration what they say and choose to follow if we wish and choose not to if we wish. But it's important that we have good advisors. We want good advice, so we need good advisors. We're talking about Jethro. You can't talk about Jethro without talking about Moses because they were related. And Moses, of course, is much more famous than Jethro. Uh, pictured on the screen right now is Michelangelo's famous sculpture of Moses. And uh, when Michelangelo sculpted Moses, he sculpted Moses with horns. You can see his two horns. And they, he did that because the only Bible Michelangelo had was the Latin Vulgate Bible. And in the Latin Vulgate, it talks about Moses going up to the top of the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. And when he came down... The Latin Vulgate says he had horns, but it's simply a mistranslation. It, the word is very close in, uh, in uh, Latin to shining. So when he came down, his face was shining. And in most of your Bibles today, uh, in your English Bibles, uh, it says shining. He, his face was radiant. It was shining. But in the Latin Vulgate, it says he came down from the mountain and he had horns. So this most famous sculpture in the entire world is based on a mistranslation. Isn't that just almost amusing? Well, the story of Moses has some very serious implications. Uh, you remember the story of Moses. He was uh, an Egyptian princess, uh, finds the baby Moses, there had been a decree to kill babies, and so she wanted to protect her son. And so she put him in the bulrushes. And then this Egyptian princess comes along and uh, uh, finds baby Moses. So the mother of Moses did a good thing by abandoning her child and putting him in a basket in the, in the bulrushes. And the Egyptian fish, uh, princess finds the baby Moses, and so this male baby is not executed. And the male baby grows up. He's an Israelite, but he's living in the land of the Egyptians. And he's convicted that his people are not being treated correctly. And one day he sees an Egyptian beating an Israelite, and he steps in, he tries to stop the beating, the Israelites, of course, were slaves, and the, the master was beating this slave, and he stepped in, and he actually killed the Egyptian. Well, knowing that now he was going to be 
executed for the deed that he had done, Moses decided to flee. So Moses fled to uh, Egypt and he sought sanctuary in the land of Midian. And that's important because the story of Jethro uh, comes uh, about from the land of Midian. So here on the, uh, the, on the screen, there's a map that shows you where Egypt is. There's an arrow. And then it shows you where Midian is. You see, it's, it's quite a ways away. And then uh, uh, there's Jerusalem, just so you can get a, a picture in your own mind. So it's about 250 miles to, to go from Egypt to the land of Midian. And uh, Jethro lived in the land of Midian, and he had seven daughters. Moses fled and he wanted to flee to a safe place. So he didn't go just, you know, down the street. He decided to go 700 or 250 miles away. And that's what he did. And he lived in the land of the Midianites. When Moses got to the land of the Midianites, he met Jethro's daughter. And Jethro's daughter's name was Zipporah. And uh, they met at, at a well she was getting water and Moses was thirsty and so he got some water and their romance flourished and they ended up getting married. Now Moses had to pay a dowry and of course being uh, someone on the run, he didn't have a lot of money. So he promised uh, to work for Jethro for his daughter's hand in marriage. And so he tended sheep for his father-in-law to be. And while he was tending sheep, he got visited by the Holy Spirit and there was the burning bush experience that, that you've known about most of you since you were a child. And so God talks to him, he says to take off your shoes because you are on holy ground and God says, I want you to go back to Egypt. And I want you to deliver my people. Well, Moses was 80 years old when this occurred. He went back uh, to Egypt. The Bible tells us that uh, he was told that those who wanted to kill him were all dead. But Moses was 80, 80 uh, years old. He died at 120. It's not like he lived to be, you know, five, 600 years old. He died... Uh, not uh, too much older than most of us will die. So he was 80 years old now. So he's an old man. And that's important to know in this story. He's an old man. And uh, he goes uh, to, uh, back to Egypt. And you know that story. If, if you read the Bible or, you know, maybe it wasn't all that accurate. But it's pretty accurate, at least, if you, if you watch uh, the movie uh, with the with uh, Moses delivering the children of Israel. Well, he went, uh, he went back to Egypt after uh, uh, he had this encounter with the burning bush. Uh, he met Jethro, the, the father, uh, his uh, father-in-law, and Jethro has a heart-to-heart -heart with him. He talks and this is what he says. He says to Moses, he's this great advisor. Remember now, we want to know who your Jethro is. Who is your advisor? It came about the next day that Moses sat to judge the people. So now you see, the children of Israel have been delivered. And Moses' family had been separated and now they're reunited. The father-in-law brings Moses, his wife and his two kids and now they're having this conversation because Jethro is watching Moses and the, the children of Israel wandered all over on their way to the promised land. Well, they wandered into the land of the Midianites and Jethro was actually a high priest of the Midianites. 